Hi, I'm Star Williams. And I'm Venus Crystal. And welcome back to the Truly Imagination Podcast. Yay! We're back, hopefully, <laughs> for with more energy. <laughs> yep, yeah. So, on the last episode, I was completely energyless and just wasn't feeling well because of a lot of anxiety. Uh, this episode, I'm just sick. <laughs> <laughs> Oy vey. And I'm in my basement again, because that's, that's where I record these, in my dark, cold basement. <laughs> wow, in your mom's next to all basement? My... <laughs> yeah. next, to my, next to my murder victim. No, just kidding! <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking! Although I actually did used to use, there's a like a longish room behind me. Um, I did used to use that um, as a makeshift shooting range, because uh, I have a BB gun. And, um, I had to, like, practice for a tetrathlon I did once, so there are targets in there oh. to practice on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> One of the many things I had to do for, um, Pony Club, which, yes, is a real recognized Which, club. uh, which one of us is the hitman again? <laughs> Hey, you never know. I I gotta I gotta get back to protecting myself. You never know. <laughs> oh, Just days for a while. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. What was the topic this week? Um, well, the topic this week is um. I believe we said we wanted to talk about um like. Our experiences in the country versus the city. But before that, we get to that, I do want to pull something up because this is the Truly Imagination podcast. We're all performing arts graduates. And um, if there's one thing I've learned when you're in the industry, you help with promotion. So I would actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to give a little shout out to something one of my friends is doing. Is that all right, Patrick? Absolutely. Fantastic. This podcast is all about. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone... So for anyone interested, um, one of my friends from background is going to be in a performance called Lover Boy. It's an original student musical. It's from April 5th to 7th, and it is a charity musical. Um, so 100% of the funds from ticket sales go to a charity. Um, it's going to be donated to Belong Ottawa. Um, it's... Um, the UFA's 11th annual student written musical. Um, the summary is following graduation from the school of lover boys, a young Cupid begins their journey armed with a bow and ar armed with, ugh, excuse me, armed with a bow arrows and unmatched confidence. Cupid strides to the tumultuous world of human emotion set to a soundtrack of catchy pop hits. This feel-good original musical will make you laugh, cry, and cheer for our young Cupid to succeed. Um, tickets are about $20. It's going to be held at the 85 U University Private Basement. Um, so if anyone is interested in that, I highly recommend you purchase yourself a ticket. 100% uh, of the funds go to Belong Ottawa. Um, and just, you know, support our fellow actors, support one of my friends who is a fellow actor. Um, so if you're free between April 5th and April 7th, uh, go check it out. Ooh, love. Ooh, love a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there, there's the, there's the theater promotion of today's episode. <laughs> Fantastic. Good to know. Good to know. And also, one more thing I think is in, with, in celebration, um, one of the Food with Fee videos reached 140 views. Yay! Let's go, chat, let's go! Of course it's the Undertale video! <laughs> Who would have known? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. And also, the Ratatouille video is doing very well. 71 videos in... Uh, 71 videos. 71 videos. 71 videos. 71 views in seven days, which is really good, because, oh my god, I did not know what I was doing for that video. <laughs> oh, boy. But it came out good. That's all that matters. 
And I got a new cookbook, so look forward to more uh, pop culture r- related recipes coming soon. But uh, that's enough promotion for today's episode, I think. Let's get into the topic. <laughs> City boy! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the city versus the country. So, for those of you who don't know, um, Patrick, you, did you grow up in the country or you just live there now? So, the first seven years of my life were um, just off of uh, Montreal Road. Mm. Yeah, do you, do you know where the uh, uh, Indian restaurant Host India is? No, I do not. Okay. Well, it's in that general vicinity where the first seven years of my life were spent. Um, <laughs> and then the rest of my life, I've been out here in the country. Uh, okay. Because, yeah, so Patrick is mostly from the country, and I grew up in the same house for 20 years uh, in the city, in a semi-residential area. Semi? However... D- you're, you're, uh, semi? <laughs> Yeah, because it's not technically, like, it's just off of, like, a main kind of road. Like, it's not, like, super residential, but it's, like, almost into the residential area. Because I'm, like, kind Your house of... is surrounded by houses. It's residential. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> um, but I've lived in the city for most of my life. However, um, I spent a decade doing horseback riding. And a good portion of my life was spent out at um, multiple different farms. Not just not just horse barns. Like, I had friends who also... I made friends with people who lived out there. And I would hang out on some of their farms sometimes. So, I have many... Expe- so, despite the fact that I've been in the city, I still know how to shovel <laughs> crap. And you know, get my boots muddy, as, you know, the people usually like to say a city folk don't do. <laughs> right on. I'm more the uh, type of country folk where it's, uh, I was surrounded by people who worked on cars and such. Mm. Uh, so, like, I don't have any farm experience. I just knew people mm. who worked on farms. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, like, they were I all saying, like, oh, my one. grandma's gonna give me a dairy farm. And <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate yeah you don't get a car on your 16th birthday you get a bunch of heifers and some land <laughs> that's right that's that's exactly right <laughs> the country experience <laughs> although only, i did if only I'd... i had someone who could give me just land for free <laughs> no if only i did actually know a girl whose parents ran a dairy farm huh i uh, was, just... uh, is this related to horseback riding? Yeah, because we used to do horseback riding together. And is so her name Grace? I would... hmm? Is her name Grace? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's the same. It's likely the same Grace that I know. Does she like? Does she have like blonde hair? Uh, not Patrick? at the moment. Does she have like? Cause, cause the Grace I'm talking about, she has. She had blonde hair when I knew her, and she had a brother. Named Griffin, I think. I shouldn't say his name, fuck! <laughs> um, uh, we'll, we'll discuss later, just in case. Uh, you know, like... That'd be very we... funny. That'd be very funny if, uh... That'd be very funny if we know the same Grace. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> the invisible uh, string theory, as they call it. <laughs> the invisible... <laughs> Yeah, but I used to go over to their place a lot because, one, I did horse camp at my barn, which, um, because my parents couldn't really drive me out there all the time because they had work, I would stay at her place for, like, a week and, um, on the dairy farm. Dairy farm. (laughs) Which, yeah, which is funny because, um, being out in the country, like, I think a lot of people that live in the city, they don't get used to the smell of crap. Like cow crap, horse crap, like all different animal smells of crap. And because I had a friend who like lived on a dairy farm, I got kind of nose blind to the smell of it, mm. as one does. And what was really funny is one time when I was in high school, we went to the experimental farm or the Canadian Agriculture Museum, and we went in to look at the cows. 
And everyone else was like gagging and throwing up because of the smell, except for me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It smells fine. I don't smell anything. And people were like, I can't stay in the room. And blah, blah, blah. it's like, I check out the cow I vlog on my channel. Um, <laughs> yes. Because yeah. I'm sure there's examples of that in it. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I got so nose blind to the smell of like cow crap that like it didn't affect me. <laughs> right on. Right on. Yes. You have any stories you would like to share, Patrick? So that way I'm not the only one blabbing. You know, this I've never had any really exciting stories to tell. Um, now, uh, let's go back to my childhood. The earliest memory that I have at the moment. I can't think mm -hmm. of anything further back. Uh, this is back when I lived just off of Montreal Road. Um, mm -hmm. This is a city story. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, uh. I think it was my cousins coming over, or someone anyway. Um, I ran straight to the door, opened it, and then ran out and jumped off of the porch. Which was a bad idea. Because um, then, uh, after I, I jumped off the porch, I fell straight on my face and scraped my oh. chin. God. I did not break anything. I just broke the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, that sounds horrific. These these days that sounds more terrifying than uh than it would have back then. Yeah. Um, That's uh, that that reminds me of the time I cheese grated my eye on the concrete. That was a horrifying experience. Oh, I actually have uh, another another story from way back when. Um, relating to my eye, um, there was one point where I almost poked it out. Oh, God! Yeah, um, I was sitting on one of my friend's porches down the road, and they have, they had, like, spikes in their, their, uh, front garden. Oh! Anyway, okay. I tried, I was, I was trying to get away from one of, uh, one of his playful attacks, um, and I twisted myself around, lost my balance, fell forward <laughs> into the spike. <laughs> God. Yeah. Um, luckily, it did not do any damage. It literally went beside the eye, and it pulled out. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That is... <laughs> yeah, terrifying. I could have been blind in my left eye. Dear... Dear God. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of m a lot of my stories are probably injury stories because those are the ones I remember. <laughs> I don't have very many uh, of those either. <laughs> oh my God. I... I don't have too many injury stories, thank God. I think the main ones that I remember is um, is the I story, which was basically I was running in heels with a ski bag on my back. Good choices were made that day, and I was running in my car, and I running my heel buckles it connects with my other heel my legs buckle and i don't have enough time to get my arms in front of my face and i slide it on the concrete mm. it was awful and i had this horrible like scrape up the side of my eye i had to go to the hospital like my lip was so screwed up it looked like someone had botched lip injections i had to eat soup sideways through a spoon with a spoon <laughs> <laughs> and I still have, like, a blemish on my eye till this day. Like, it looks like a really dark eye circle, but it's, like, a kind of a blemish from that. The other um, kind of injury story that I have also comes from horseback riding. <laughs> <laughs> I used to lease a horse, which, yeah, that's a thing you can do. You, instead of buying a horse, you can just lease it for, yeah. like, a cheaper price. Um, because horseback riding is expensive. And if you're not super rich uh 
Buying a horse is not a worthwhile investment. Those things are expensive. It was expensive to lease it in like like in ways you would not believe. Not important though. So I was I, for like three years. I leased this like Norwegian fjord. Her name was Mara. Um, she was quite the horse. Well, she wasn't really a horse. She was technically a pony because she was short, but she was like a horse. Um, and the thing with Norwegian fjords, they have very large necks, which mm. means they have a lot of neck strength. So if they yank down, it, it means you're going forward. She was very good with me, surprisingly. She would listen to me. She would obey my commands. No one else's. But the reason this story happened was because in spring, uh, because most horses... Um, um because most horses are um they live in paddocks so basically a big area kind of encapsulated by like an electric fence in the winter it gets really icy and the horses can't run which is why um it's very um it's kind of mandatory that you take your horse into like maybe an indoor arena and let them run so they can get exercise but when spring happens horses get really hyper because they can finally run again without fear of breaking their legs. Mm. And uh Mara was one of those horses and it was like a fir- like it was around Easter. And I remember it was around Easter because you'll see why. I was riding her. I was doing like my usual routine like walk, posting trot both ways, canter, whatever whatever I was doing. Um Except when I did canter, Mara got so excited because it was spring. She breaks off into a full-on sprint, like super fast sprint. And I'm trying to get her to stop. I'm sitting down. I'm like holding my like like holding the reins, like wh- like like being like whoa whoa slow down. And then she stops, like 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 dead western stop. Just like she goes from zero like a hundred to zero like. And because I, because gravity and physics exist, I went flying over her head onto hmm. my arm. And onto your arm. yeah, and it was not good, and my arm was in a lot of pain. So we had to go to the hospital in Almont. Hmm. Nice yeah. place. Yeah, it was very nice. However, like they didn't have a doctor in. Because it was Easter. So the doctor had to come in to oh, see so, me. So, so to your, take your, my your, your anniversary was like just uh just on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, yeah. That was technically my anniversary of busting my arm. Thankfully it wasn't broken. It wasn't even fractured. It was just, you know, the trauma of getting thrown off the horse, kind of whatever. Um but yeah, that was, and th- thank God she's small, because uh, for anyone who doesn't know, getting thrown off or falling off a horse, if it's really big, you are in for a whole world of pain. I love horseback riding, it's a great sport, but like, I knew some of the girls at my riding place, they would ride like these giant like thoroughbreds, oh my god. <laughs> there was this family of horses at my first barn. Um it was Nessie and Flash and their uh then the mare Lex or mare their mother Lexi and Flash and Nessie were insane. <laughs> like they were very hyper um kind of like spastic sometimes and i knew a girl who specifically rode nessie all the time and she came off like so many times it's like i couldn't do that (laughs) how do you just deal with that and and still ride that horse for years and years and years and years it's like what how because like because like they were big they were big 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 horses like i think they were i don't remember exactly what breed they were they were like just like kind of dark brown really tall i don't remember if that's like a quarter or a thoroughbred or whatever but uh yeah i've seen some i've seen some brutal falls in my day in fact one of them from grace she came off of flash 
the the brother of Nessie, and that was that was something to watch. It was not good, which is weird because she was on Flash, and I was on the Miniature Pony Snickers. <laughs> it was a very weird pairing that day. I'm sure you had a few Snickers go your way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I don't have anything quite as dramatic as uh, being thrown off of a horse, um, <laughs> but I do have uh, a, a story from when I was a kid, also living just uh, just off of Montreal Road. Mm. Um, so I was riding a bike. Mm. Um, do you know the bike path that goes down the the, that goes along the road towards the Aviation and Space Museum. Yep, the Aviation Parkway bike path. Yeah, I didn't want to call it that in case I was wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's the Aviation Parkway. Yeah. Um, so, way way back before 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 there, the the bike one of the bike paths that goes towards there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm young. I don't really know how to ride a bike, um, and I had training wheels. Um, oh! So I was going down a hill, and mm. it was just super fast. I couldn't stop it. Like my legs just gave out from the pedals. Oh! And so, like, I'm going down this hill like a rocket, and then. Um, I, I, I scream out, I can't slow down. So anyone who's coming around the corner knows. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as soon as I got to the bottom, there was like a little rock in the path and it just jumped the bike and I fell off. <laughs> oh boy. Like, yeah, I was wearing things like uh, a helmet, but like I got scrapes on my knees, scrapes on mm. my elbows. Mm, not good, not good, not good. <laughs> One of the reasons to this day I don't wear shorts. Mm. I don't think I wore many short wore many shorts after that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you wear shorts, so no, <laughs> that checks out. You haven't because uh, the only time I wear shorts <laughs> is when I go swimming. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I used to bike to school like when I was younger because uh we didn't have a car for years um and so my mom and i would we would bike to, she would bike me to my school and this was i don't know if this was before well it was during when she was like working at happy goat um uh but we would bike from my house to school every day um I don't really have any, like, injury uh, stories, because I was pretty good at cycling, but the nice thing about uh, going along the path we did, it was, like, right along the Rio River, so in the spring, we would get to see all the baby geese and the baby uh, ducks. Except one time, one of the baby geese tried to, like, come up and say hello, and I heard the hissing of a Canada goose, and it's like, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta <laughs> run before the demons get us! Because, oh my god, Canadian geese are demon cobra chickens. the killer snake bird of canada cobra chickens. they're they're ruthless <laughs> ruthless birds uh, but surprisingly uh i've heard that they're very tame when they go on vacation to florida <laughs> <laughs> yeah cuz they're in america and they know they can't screw around down or there. they'll get shot <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah we're in miami we're not trying anything <laughs> Enjoy Disney World. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the, like if there's one thing, it's like the, the, the geese are like, yeah, we don't fuck with Floridians. It's just, it's just funny. Have you seen the news that, articles? Uh, we ain't going up against that. <laughs> that a lot of Canadians go to the same place as Canadian geese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although it'd be funny to see like Florida man attacks goose. <laughs> That'd be an MMA fight. <laughs> A yeah. Florida man, the Canadian goose. <laughs> Who would win? F A F O. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Some of the 
of Canadian geese go to California. I know that because when I used to go to California to visit my grandma, you'd see them walking along the golf course, and I'd be like, hey! What's good? Other, <laughs> my brethren! Other Canadians are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. California is nice, but I'm not a big U.S. person. And even when I was in California, it was in, like, a gated community, so, like... The, the I was kind of away time, from everyone. Um, the one time I actually went on vacation to the States, um, mm -hmm. it, I, I pretty much just went to a place that felt the same as being at home, <laughs> which was in Arkansas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, only, I only went to, ca um, I only would go to like, I've only been to New York and California because that's where my family well, they used to live in New York. They don't live there. They live in, like, L.A. now. But um, I don't go there anymore because I don't have time or <coughs> money to go to California. And also just, there's no point. <laughs> there's really no point. But you do see the Canadian geese while you're down there, and it's like, how did you, how did you, how did you get here? Well, obviously from, wings. like, Vancouver. Yeah. I think it's because, like, depending on where the geese are, they go to wherever it's, like, warm. So, like, so if you're on, like, the You just west go coast, south they... until it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They go, if they're west coast geese, they go to California. If they're east coast geese, they go to Florida. Yep. If they're right in the middle, they go to Texas. <laughs> that's where the, that's where the Albertan geese are. They're in Texas. And surprisingly, Texas. surprisingly, Texas has a really big Tim Hortons in it does it now yeah google it <sighs> i why oh because tim's is all over the world now we don't even have well, the biggest tim hortons in the world it's somewhere in bangladesh i think it said there's uh, i know that there's a um there's a tim hortons in dubai and i only know that because one of my teachers used to um my teachers used one of my teachers used to live in Dubai, so yeah, that's what happens when international companies buy Canadian things. Yep, God damn it, Burger King! <laughs> I can't really believe was... the king owns the Hortons. It, the king doesn't own the Hortons. It's oh, uh, restaurant. Don't? It's Restaurant Brands International who owns oh. both of them. They just happen to own BK. Yeah, the decaying restaurant that somehow still remains. BK, BK. They haven't been good since the 90s, and I wasn't even alive in the 90s, so I've never tried it. Uh, I never you will. Know, when I was a kid, we actually had Burger King quite often. Um, back when they had, like, Transformers toys for, for stuff. Mm. Yeah, I've never had... I've never had BK, never had Taco Bell. Um, I've... I've had McDonald's because I had no choice. But, yeah, but um, you almost died. <laughs> I did almost die. Um, I'm a Wendy's. I'm a Wendy's girl. I like my, I like my uh, square beef. <laughs> uh -huh. My square beef, fresh, never frozen, with that good lemonade. The strawberry lemonade's actually really good. And uh, Wendy's doesn't make me throw up. Also, Popeyes is good. Popeyes has good like batter. Come so buy make... chicken from Popeyes. Yeah, they do better than KFC, because KFC made me throw up purple stuff. Well, that's what are you an putting interesting in your chicken, Colonel? Uh, um, well, first of all, it's not even really the Colonel's chicken anymore. Um, <laughs> the Colonel's been dead for a while. Yeah. Or he's I in like, that dating I like KFC, though. Um, Popeyes, <laughs> I actually have it lower than KFC, only because uh, I, just don't, I just don't like it for whatever reason. I like it because I um, I prefer the I prefer the breading. I remember my riding teacher used to call KFC Dirty Bird. <laughs> <laughs> he, my riding teacher was very interesting. My riding teachers, my horseback riding teachers, were very interesting people. I went from being taught by this like young sixteen year old girl who was very nice, and then when I graduated to being like a serious, more serious uh, equestrian horseback rider. Um, I got taught by, like, the main riding teacher who owned the barn, and she was, like, super, like, she was, like, she was tough, but she was tough in a way that would make you better. Like, 
she was she was she was she was she was German. That shouldn't mean anything, but she was, and she was very like, you got to do it all or you don't do it, because like that's the thing with horseback riding. It's a one hundred percent sport. If you're not a hundred percent in it, you ain't gonna get nowhere. And then when she um and then she uh, sold the barn, and I got taught by this like <laughs> very flamboyant gay man, and he. Actually, has the same name as you, but he was he was fun. You tell me also, about that. <laughs> I think you yeah. actually said it on a previous pod, but I'm not sure. Maybe I did. I don't know, but he was fun. Um, still, very much. If you're not doing it 100, percent don't do it. Um, so he was he was fun. I went. My mom and my dad and I we went to like parties at his house, and that was. That was very interesting. I've always, it's very weird. I, <laughs> I don't, and then, and then I had to move barns because of things I can't really talk about because it involves criminal activity. Ooh. So we had to move barns so that way my father didn't lose his security clearance. And, uh, we went to this other barn that was way far out. Um, and, uh, I did that until the pandemic when I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this anymore. It's expensive, and I can't do this. <laughs> I was, I was too anxious at that point because I've gotten thrown off. Can't be horsing around and... anymore. Yeah. Well, again, it's if you're not a hundred percent into it, and also I couldn't ride because of the pandemic. But if you're not a hundred percent into it, like, like, and I wasn't at that point. I was sixteen very aware of my own mortality and I had gotten thrown off or bucked off so many times that I was not confident or comfortable on horses like unless they were really docile mm. so at that point it's like yeah no I I gotta I gotta hang up my boots hang up the boots <laughs> <laughs> it was fun I rode from the ages of 6 to 16 and I it was fun I did I even did like competitive like horse shows which are a beast. Yeah, the Grace I know does horse uh, horse shows. Yeah, equestrian horse shows, especially if you're someone who lives in the city and has to commute out to the country. Um. It, to be we fair, used they to used to have them. They used to have them at, um, you know, um, that uh, that. Wesley that Clover. Was, the big no, place was no, 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 no. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like many, many years ago, um, mm. they used to have them. You know that building, that 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 beige building by uh, Lansdowne. I can't remember it. Oh, name. the the yeah, that place. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they used to do horse stuff in there. Yeah, the Cattle Castle. I um. But yeah, I I used to compete. I competed at Wesley Clover because everyone competes at Wesley Clover at least a couple times. It sucks though. I hate Wesley Clover. Um, Wesley Clover, West Star, which was my favorite. Ashland, which I think honestly should have been shut down because the grounds were horrible and so many people got injured, including myself. Um, Gaelic Glen, which was also really amazing. Uh, and I say that because that's where I, West Star and Gaelic Glen are where I would usually place higher. So. I just think they're better, and uh, I think that's it. Those are all the places that I. Those are all the places that I would compete, and like, it's like. A, I will say this. Equestrian horse showing prepares you for what it's like on set. It's a very weird connection, but it is. Because when you're horse showing, it's you get up really early in the morning. You have to wash your and prepare and clean your horse. I mean, you should already have washed it the night before, but you gotta <laughs> rewash them again. Like, well, actually, no, you don't. I'm sorry. You wash them the night before. You braid their hair, whatever. <laughs> um, you get them. You start walking them. You load them up in the trailer, which oh boy, that's an experience. You load them up in the trailer. You tr you get behind the trailer. You drive to the venue. You get your horse out, and then you wait for like not just like oh an hour or two hours. No, like usually like eight hours. You're sitting there waiting for eight hours. You're walking around. Because the thing with horseback riding shows, you never know what's going to happen. You never know if your thing's going to get pushed up or if it's going to get pushed back. you got to be there early in order to make sure you're there. And you stay until your time is up. Which could be, like, 
any time between like one and nine. Usually it's not doesn't go that far, but I once had to stay until ten o'clock at night at Wesley Clover, and I hate Wesley Clover because there's so many people there, because so many be- com- pe- people compete, and you'd be competing with twenty people. At least with Gaelic Glen and West Star, you got to be in a group of like maybe five or six, and that would mean I would usually place. Although the problem is, is usually um, horse show people can be kind of biased. It's a it is a very it's an elite sport like tennis or golf and if you have a higher performing or a more expensive horse you are more likely to win yeah. it's not to say you can't win i won although one time a kid who got three de- point deductions placed higher than me which was bull crap but no 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 usually... no, 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 no no it wasn't because it was horses <laughs> yeah it was horse crap but um yeah, it is, like, it's not rigged in the way that, like, some sports are, but, like, if you, ha- like, it is very much a, the more money you have, like, the more time you have, the better the horse you have, it's, like, yeah, there's, there's a competitive advantage for the people that have more money. But I did, I did, uh, place, like, third, second, even first sometimes. Never got a grand champion, though, but, um, you know, they I really don't mind. Like it was a it was a miracle if I placed higher than fourth, fifth, or sixth sometimes. But it's it's fun and it again, it does prepare you for um being on set because I got used to sitting around and doing sitting nothing wait. <laughs> for hours. So and then and then I was like, Oh yeah, well acting is on set is a lot of sitting around and then a little bit of work and it's like, I can do that. I got three years experience of doing that. <laughs> yeah. Like I I'm already so... prepared. I know exactly what to do. I did a so, bit of a yeah, Dawson laugh there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. In a way horseback riding prepared me for acting in some crazy <laughs> turn of circle of events. Yeah, that anyway. sounds that sounds that sounds great. <laughs> it, uh, it, 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 I just find it funny. I find it funny that that, that, that like it's kind of connected. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, how are we doing for time, Patrick? We've got three minutes. <laughs> we have exactly three minutes left. Of Unless, time. of course, you just want to end it off that way. <laughs> I think I think we've I think we've kind of exhausted our topic. <laughs> Fair enough. We got enough. some good We got some good material out of this one. Yeah, I didn't even have to go to the fabric store this week. <laughs> what? Cuz it's material, you know. Oh. <laughs> Very funny, Patrick. All right. Well, anyways, guys, thank you all so much for listening to this week's podcast. Be sure to check out the thing Fiona mentioned earlier. Lover boy, Lover the boy. performance lover boy. So check it out. Um, tickets are on sale now. It's April fifth to April seventh. Um, tickets are twenty bucks. And again, the ch- the um the proceeds go to Belong Ottawa. So yeah, it's for a good cause. So if you can, please um go see it because my friend's in it and it's it's pretty it sounds pretty cool. So yeah. Alrighty. Until next time. Enjoy. Truly Imagination Entertainment channel and subscribe. See you guys. Bye bye.